welcome to Ward 1 meeting. Glad you're here on this cold, cold night. Um, and uh, we'll just hear, um, we have a, a good agenda here just to kind of report on a few things and see what concerns you have. Um, first of all, I want to welcome all of you and Alan Osner, our um, neighborhood uh, president. Thank you so much, Alan, for being here. And Sarah Marsh, the Ward 1 Position 2 Alderman. We're delighted to, do, to have these meetings every quarter. And I've gotten the dates for the next two. We'll have, we decided uh, some months ago that we'd, we'd have these meetings every quarter, just so that you could talk about whatever's on your mind. And we're glad you're here. So we're going to meet in April on the 24th, July on the 24th. Actually, Adela, why don't we discuss these at another time because I'm actually going to be gone during some of those dates. Oh, and okay. it would really be good okay. if we could agree on these before now. Okay. To the public. Okay. Well, we'll just wait. I have, um, I, I thought we would have them on the 4th, uh, the 4th. But anyway, I will get them to you, Alan, once we, uh, once we make that decision. We won't decide then on the fourth Thursday of uh, every quarter. That's what I had thought we decided on, but we'll, we'll look at it and, and work on it and make the announcement later. Um, let's see, there are a few things that I think we need to do an update on. Um, first of all, let me say, is there anything that you particularly want to talk about tonight? Any issues that we've talked about at other times that you're still waiting for an answer uh, to or um, any new concerns that you have. Let me suggest that anytime you have a new concern, you feel free to call Sarah or myself or Alan Osner or Aubrey. Aubrey always knows where to find us, Aubrey <laughs> Shepherd. And uh, we uh, will do what we can to answer your questions. And then we'll certainly put it on the agenda for the next quarterly meeting. Yes. Yes. Do you need to come? Does she need to come to the mic? Please come to mic and identify yourself. Yes, I've got the crosswalk on my list. I'm Pam Burton. Hi, Pam. Well, I appreciate the way the city got out immediately and uh -huh. got that crosswalk there. And occasionally a driver will stop, but not very often. Mm -hmm. And um, if one stops going one direction, you have to wait because that doesn't mean people coming the other way will notice and stop too. So it's still pretty treacherous to use that crosswalk. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, is it possible to get uh, a signal there or some... Um, you know, I'll what lie. about some better signage, maybe before the crosswalk, say, uh, reminding drivers that they, it's their responsibility to stop for pedestrians in the crosswalk. Do you think that would help? I don't, I don't know. It's like mm -hmm. most people don't seem to know. And, I, and sometimes I get pretty close to the edge, so mm -hmm. they have to see me. But I, I think it's just a highway. They're used to zipping mm -hmm. on down the way. Uh -huh. but, well, we okay. talked about that, and Mr. Gully, you know, I believe either at the meeting before last, we talked about that, yeah, and he, he talked say, about I some... I'm sure that people will stop, and they mm -hmm. don't, but I, you know, there are lights all over town at other crosswalks, so I just wonder if that's a possibility. Or okay. Not. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to our transportation department and see what solutions they may have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other concerns that anyone has? Well, I know that we've talked, the crosswalk was on my agenda for us to talk about tonight and get the um, update on it. Um, the fourth and block traffic calming, um, I think is, you know, that was something that we talked about at one of our meetings. And um, our transportation director, if you recall, I think he told us at our last meeting, he's done speed studies. and. Nothing. It doesn't qualify. So, if that still if it continues to be a problem, then let us know, and we'll see what we can do about it. But it really doesn't qualify for traffic calming. Yes, Alan. Uh, Alan Osner. Um, the 
study that he's referring to is the one that he admitted was done improperly. Oh, okay. So he assured us that he would measure the traffic on a week that was not what I call a dead week. Uh -huh. There are two or three dead weeks in the in a university town, and he that got measured between semesters, between okay. between yeah. the summer semester and the start of school. Uh huh. And I mean, there were there was no one in town. A lot of us had left, and and no one drove down the street. Okay. We noticed the little uh, counter things, mm -hmm. the little ropes pulled across mm -hmm. the street, and I don't know if everyone remembers, but. Two meetings ago at the senior center, Mr. Gully noticed that. We brought it to his attention. He said, you know what, we do need to remeasure those. You're right. Okay. They're not accurate counts. So, so we'll ask him to do that. Right. That, I think his numbers will change, I believe. And then what was that specific location again? Fourth and Block. Fourth and Block. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Fourth and Block was one, but also South Street. Oh, also Between South. Block and South College. Okay. Yeah. And... Is that called Ninth Street? It's just south of you guys. Seventh. Seventh Street between South College and. So it's not South Street. It's Seventh Street. Two different streets. Oh, South and Seventh. Mm -hmm. Okay. South Street. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that street all the way to past Wiggins behind the church? No. West of church. Locus. 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 That is a secret speedway when people want to avoid MLK. Uh -huh. They just turn, go one block over, and I mean, they fly. Okay. You'll be okay. shocked. So. All right. We'll ask. We'll ask Mr. Gully to look at that. Great. Okay. And Thank report you. to us at our next Great. meeting or okay. something sooner. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. So, any other any other thing related to those particular issues? Uh, Aubrey Shepard, uh, Mr. Smith is here. He lives across the street from me on South Duncan. Uh huh. And we have long uh, wished that there could be a marker of some kind to improve safety at South Duncan Avenue and 11th Street, which is also named uh, an extension of Hill Avenue, which it was historically. That's, that's the old road that comes down from Hill. Mm -hmm. Hill Avenue comes down from uh, MLK and jogs over, mm -hmm. and you know it, and you've been you've many times lately riding the bike. And uh, so that intersection is very dangerous, and a, one solution would help it quite a bit if there were a white or yellow line in the middle of the street as you approach and from either direction okay. uh, on, on what uh, would be 11th if it's extended and um, okay. Duncan. And that's something I was told several years ago would not fit because it's not a major arterial or something like that. It's not a state highway, although it once was because it was it was went on down Cato Springs Road. It was a Trail of Tears route and Civil War route and so forth. You can see those signs on that street. On those streets. So but you think we need some kind of traffic calming? Well or? we need well, we got a little traffic calming down the block and uphill, but... Just a lane delineation to help people... A lane learn. delineation would help because people can't see what's coming from either direction, and they almost meet sometimes. I've seen the one that. coming this way, mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. north, will be out in the center of the street. The one coming mm -hmm. west and wanting to turn will mm -hmm. be over on the left side out of his own lane, and there's nothing to mark it. And okay, we will that mention would be that too. Very too. important. Great. We'll Plus, I'd that. like a police officer to always sit. This is a joke. <laughs> You'd like a police officer to always sit there? He he wants you to always be in this one spot. I know that's not possible because they're always moving. But Larry can also attest to the fact that uh, 
the traffic coming out of the Hill Place Apartments is very fast. There is a stop sign. And it was once, when they first finished the apartments, it was stolen and probably went to one of the apartments. They, when they move out, they discard those signs, and sometimes you see them out junked, you know, or somebody gets them and recycled. But I hope the city signs go back to the city when they go to that recycling center. But at any rate, uh, there is a sign there still, but particularly, I think on weekend nights, Friday and Saturday, it's the worst, the worst nights, because there's a liquor store over on 15th at uh, South School, mm -hmm. and these cars seem to go out of there really fast just before midnight. So you're saying from Hill Place on to Duncan? Uh-huh, but it occurs all during the day, and, and the young people riding scooters and people on bicycles are at special risk. And the bicyclists are actually better about wearing helmets on average than the people who wear, ride those scooters. And I don't think those things are even required to be licensed, which is a fault in our state law. But um, they can go pretty fast, and they also go right through those stop signs because they're trying to get to class as fast as possible. And I remember being a student, and, but I didn't have a car in college in my day. So that, that would be a concern for our neighborhood. So you'd like to see some extra police patrols on Friday and Saturday night just before midnight on that street? Particularly, yes. Okay. If, they, if they have time on ball game nights, mm -hmm. there's ball game traffic through there too. Okay. And, uh, but those young kids, I, I speak to a lot of them and say, hey, that's a stop sign. They say, oh, I didn't notice. Slump can see it. And others thank me for warning them that it's a, always been a dangerous intersection and we hope it can be safer in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, South Duncan in 11th. Excuse me, could you all come to the mic? Okay. Yeah, yes, sir, it's at the uh, south exit uh, from Hill Place. Thank you. All right. Um, I also spoke with Mr. Gully, and um, he reports that our sidewalks are coming along, and uh, both... Uh, Alderman Marsh and I, and I turned in our preferences, and he says that we have four huge projects going on. Um, Armstrong will be completed. Huntsville uh, will be completed. We all know where those two are. Then they're going to do School Street from MLK south to 15th. I think that was on everyone's list. Dixon, east of college, up to Fletcher. So those are the four projects where we'll be getting sidewalks. And um, he says that's uh, pretty close to $400,000 worth of sidewalks and probably uh, greater than any other award. So I think we're to be very grateful. Can you come to the microphone? What section of, of South School Street? From MLK to 15th Street. Okay, okay, that's great because that's that's the part of the alternate tunnel route that mm -hmm. was talked about a year ago. If people did right. not want to take the tunnel, so. Right. And I think that'll be really good for those small businesses along that strip as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. I've been, you know, I I tend to count pedestrians as I drive uh, back and forth there, and there are always people walking on the ditches and the weed barriers and. I've seen a lot of people having to go into the street around uh, the old brick house kitchen building, and it's just time that we address that. So I'm glad to see that we're able to put the money there to make those improvements. Me too. I, I think a lot of people walk there as a part of a local economy mm -hmm. that simply don't have a car to get to work. Yeah. And I'm not sure there's any other part of town that it's so prevalent, people walking to get to work or to go get groceries. Yeah. Um, 
people actually have to push strollers with babies to get to a grocery store. I've They're not that. doing it for yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's going so all the way down to um, almost the 540 entrance. Great. I mean, I see them down Pascado Springs Road, sure. families with strollers pushing them along that weed barrier. And right. I, I, that's a priority for me, and that's what I'll be advocating for, are those sidewalks. Right. The, the follow-up mm -hmm. for me, since that corridor is very important for pedestrians, more than just casual pedestrians, mm -hmm. but trying to earn a living, at night, it's really dark, especially the segment south of MLK to the uh, trail crossing, which is maybe two blocks. If you'll try to visualize it's in front of O'Reilly, and mm -hmm. is that called Life Harvester? There's life Source. Life, well, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's Life Source. Real. Right along there, it's it's very dark, so that would be a request. To Some additional lighting. And it's state mm -hmm. highway. That's 71 at that point. Right. But I, I think that would, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to go along with the thinking that it's important, more than just casual walking, then people have to walk at, in the dark, too. So this is, you don't, you want lights on. MLK or call, which is South School well, from South MLK school. to at least the trail car crossing. Okay, which I'd like to see him. I'd like to see us carry him down to 15th at least if we could. Right. Uh, so we'll just have to see what we have in the budget. But and since it's an, an alternate to the the tunnel, mm -hmm. the trails we build we never leave in the dark. That's I mean that's right. that's pretty much the rule. I mean there's the uh, um, trails that are around. Uh, big forests and parks like uh, Lake Fayetteville, and those aren't completely lit, but that's a different type of trail. Mm -hmm. But the urban trails, you all are doing really good to keep lit. If this, in fact, is an alternative to the trail, it, it should have some lighting to go along. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, and also we've put uh, street lights along 71 uh, closer to downtown and uh, along Lafayette, and so I think you know, we're not second-class citizens down here. Absolutely. We need the same treatment. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Alderman Marsh, would you mm -hmm. like to talk about the revisions to the urban ag? Um, do you have the summary that I you do. I, uh -huh. I have the change in the ordinance, but I think the summary might be more succinct. Okay. Um, I think you remember that meeting before last, Peter Nierenberger, uh, Nierengarten, uh, came and spoke with us about the uh, urban ag ordinance that's coming up. And they've made some um, revisions, mm -hmm. and it's going to come before the council on February 18th, I believe. Okay. I believe yeah. February 18th. So if you have, uh, after you listen to what Alderman Marsh has to say about it, if you have some questions or concerns, um, you can make sure you're at the February 18th meeting. Okay. So these are just the changes from what was presented before, and they're going to be reducing the maximum number of beehives on a property from eight to four. They're going to be reducing the maximum number of goats on a property from six to three. And keep in mind that there are still uh, property size minimums in order to qualify to have these, this many bees or, or agricultural animals. Um, and they're going to require that beehives be located at least 100 feet from an unfenced property line or 20 feet from a fenced property line. And that's to keep those from being disturbed. If someone is out uh, mowing their yard, you don't want them to inadvertently disturb uh, the beehive. Um, and then they're going to be requiring that goats be kept in the back and side yards. Nobody is going to have goats in their front yard. Um, and there's going to be uh, additional signage requirements on the properties that have bees so that there are they're going to make it very clear that the bees are there so that no one accidentally trespasses and disturbs a hive. Um, and then they're uh, going to put in some additional requirements for fowl and goat manure storage and disposal, just to make sure that those are handled properly, that they're not going to uh, contaminate our watersheds or cause any kind of a nuisance for neighbors. So um, that's just really what's changed from the previous listing. Are there any questions on that? All right. Oh, Alan? <coughs> I don't have
don't have any questions, but I just wanted to voice support for the urban agriculture uh, ordinance. Great. I think it's I think it's great. People should have more options mm -hmm. as to how to have cottage industries. It started out with chickens, mm -hmm. and I think that's great. People can have more chickens now, so I'm I'm all in favor. So thank, thank you. you. I hope you all are. Great. Yeah, it is, and that's a good point. You know, it's not just about uh, fighting food insecurity, but the cottage industries. Uh, I know I've been buying goat's milk soap from a local producer, and it would be great if she <laughs> could have more uh, places locally to buy that goat milk. So, um, mm -hmm. come to the mic, please. Uh -huh. And tell us your name. Michael Crow. And until the demise of the rooster sometime six months ago, um, every morning about 3 o'clock, this rooster started crowing. Roosters are prohibited under the ordinance. Okay, well, that's good to know because I understand the necessity for them. I'm in favor of them, but not across the fence, which is less than 20 feet from my mm -hmm. back window. And everybody where I live is annoyed, if not awakened, by those things. So you're saying that now roosters, roosters are absolutely prohibited. Okay. So you need if that if you hear another rooster, you no, need to let us know. It's been yeah. like I said, it's been at least six months, and I just feared the rooster died because it had been there for years. Oh really? Yes, it had years. And, and that is in years. the city limits. Right across the street. Yeah. Well, so that, that's why I was wondering if they were going to, because I thought, well, maybe the people decided that uh, they're going to bring in another rooster for their hens, and we're going to go through a whole another three or four years of roosters at 3 o'clock in the morning. Let us know. Let us know. That's you would Thank call you. code compliance, okay. and that will be dealt with. Thank you. Thank you. For that very reason, it will be dealt with. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if I may, on the urban ag, uh, I... Uh, I used to have a rooster. It came with my property, and it's it's surrounded by open area. So, and uh, so the, there's no rooster now. But that's because he got really old. Uh -huh. But hens are awfully lonesome without a rooster. Let's, yeah. let's remember that. <laughs> and you you'll get eggs, but they won't be fertile in case you wanted to raise any chicks to share with your neighbors or something. That's that's one of the bad things. Um, on the the goat thing, I uh, I would think, say, if someone's got a yard, how far, you for instance, uh, Alderman Gray, your your front yard is, is what, 150 feet to the street? How, how long is our front yard to the street, Gary? Same kind of yards. That's uh, 150 feet, isn't it? Seven o'clock is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so some people with that big yard, particularly in the sort of rural areas, I, I don't think saying no, nothing in the front yard is all that necessary, but I understand as a general rule uh, in the tight areas, then it, it would be logical. Another concern, particularly if you fenced them in properly and so forth, so they didn't get out to the street. Right. <coughs> but, and also, are they pygmy goats that required? Uh, I believe so. Uh, only female dwarf or pygmy goats allowed, the up to 85 pounds or 22.5 inches tall. So we're talking the small goats. And for people interested in uh, vegetation removal, non-native plants from from um, public land or private land, they're a wonderful thing to have because they will eat Japanese honeysuckle, the leaves of the really? China honeysuckle yeah. bushes. Huh. They'll eat uh, privet, they'll eat Johnson grass, all things you'd like to get rid of and if you're trying to have a natural mm -hmm. environment. And they'll eat your food crops too, so you have to control whoever's got them. They'll also eat your bicycle seats, as I found out. Well, <laughs> there's something about <laughs> keeping them away from the bike rack. <laughs> but uh, the other thing is that is good about this ordinance. Uh, it's great. I mean, I think I grew up in World War II. I was a small, small child then, and everybody had chickens nearly in their yard back then. And you know, they didn't have fleas and ticks or mm -hmm. any of those things in their yards. But uh, well, uh, I think it's, it's great for people. I think you need to be there on February the 18th to speak uh, in support, and you too, Alan. 
be there on February the 18th and let your voice be heard. And I think a lot of people will be. Um, Good. It's popular. Good. The other thing is this one notation about the ability of people to have a garden. To have a garden? Mm -hmm. The ability to have uh -huh. it is that it's got to have good soil. And most of our flat land, such as near here, not on this hill where the, we, we're sitting, but across the street, up this way, down in the park, these places have naturally fertile organic soil. And any time we can convince a builder to protect that soil and not red dirt, use red dirt fill mm -hmm. and build a, a slab and put a house there if they are choosing to, without doing that, we keep a little bit of space where the water can soak in, replenish the groundwater supply, send cleaner water down our streams when it gets to the stream from there, and also allow good gardens that don't need fertilizer, they don't need tilling even, the limited tilling to put in a, a crop in this kind of place. Uh, examples of that are Tricycle Farm mm -hmm. and World Peace Wetland Prairie would be that except it's a nature park as opposed to a uh, gardening park. So these places that are low and over the karst areas of our city where it's sunken wetland, these need to be protected for those purposes. And for the future, people will be wanting that more and more, I suspect. We, we hope more people will become gardeners. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Okay, anybody else have something to say? Yes. Pardon? Come up to the microphone. So that I'm just kind of curious, are y'all expecting it to pass? Is it going to be close? What is, do you, can you comment I'm on that? I'm hesitant to speculate on how others will vote, but I, I think that there's been a lot of support for this in our community. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, you really should write all the council members and express your support. They okay. need to hear from, from mm -hmm. everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the... Urban Ag Ordinance, February the 18th. The other uh, item that I wanted to mention, just kind of to update you on, is that our parking deck that we're uh, building for downtown, we're working on it very hard, and uh, so I would encourage you to read all the articles in the paper and any meetings that are public, which all of them are, uh, if you're interested in the parking deck, be sure and um, come and voice your opinion. I have a picture here which was in the uh, Walton Art Center program last week when we attended, so I'm going to put it here so that you can see exactly where the deck is going to be, which would be informative for you. I don't think we've had anything quite that good in the newspaper. So do you have any questions or comments on the deck? My, quite my comment first is that the discussion about liner buildings uh -huh. and uh, how the, the street is for commerce and for people, um, and I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been used successfully throughout town on a lot of other projects. A lot of other cities have used that with the idea being to build a parking deck and to utilize the street edge for dead cars is hurting the economy, and it hurts the street. It's a dampening effect. Um, do you all have an update for us? I know there was a discussion as to part of the parking deck was not going to have a liner. Yeah. Um, that's sort of my question. Well, I met with comment. Jeremy Pate about that um, and Don Marr and have actually sent them a list of suggestions. And Part of the problem is uh, when we received the initial estimate um, that we based the bond measure on, I don't think it included a lot of the architecture that we need to make the liner building successful. And now we're getting these estimates that are showing cost overruns, and we have to build it within the budget for the bond money. Um, and we're also limited by the fact that 
uh, we cannot rent the space as a condition of the bond money. So we couldn't do anything for speculative rental. Um, but I've compiled a list of potential options uh, and sent them to Jeremy and he's working on them. Anything from uh, looking for a community partner that could develop the liner uh, aspect or uh, thinking of it as in phases and right now we might put in something like a food truck court um, to enable the food trucks to pull up there and have some vitality on the street and incorporating some street art and public seating and rain gardens with like some ecological services that could be an artistic way to, to do something low cost but that then we could go back in a few years when we had the funding and put in a liner. But if we can't build the liner building immediately, I'm insisting on at least a plan to make sure that that streetscape is vital and that we have um, some sort of a plan to move forward with a liner in the near future. But uh, we really need everybody's ideas and support in coming up with some solution for this issue. Okay. Um, I was participating in the downtown master plan mm -hmm. that went on, boy, eight, close yeah. to ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And if we could roll those tapes and listen to the professionals advising us on, it's yeah. real simple, how to kill our town or how to promote our town, uh, the not putting up the old-fashioned parking deck mm -hmm. is really in the bad bucket. And yeah. It's, and it's simple and... I mean, it's a mm -hmm. simple uh, uh, problem right. that's, that's obvious to the, the urban planners. Yeah. So In our Dover Coal Master Plan, over and over again, it tells right. us to demand of private developers that they uh, construct inhabitable liner buildings on all right. downtown parking decks. Right. And I think we need to set the standard for that. We need to, to do that. Um, we're dealing with this funding issue, and I have made it very clear that I want a solution, um, but you know, solutions just don't appear out of anywhere. So, any ideas that you have for creative funding? You know, we're looking at other departments that may have a reserve fund if there's some function that they could put in that liner building. Um, we, I've suggested anything from crowdsourcing to uh, just leasing out the land for community benefit in lieu of rent so that we're not technically renting it. We've got a long list of things that staff is exploring right now to make sure that that space is vital and, and a good place in our downtown. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Open to any, any subject. Uh -huh. I understand Pam already mentioned this, but we live on Block Street where Thank goodness the uh, mm -hmm. crosswalk was put in. Right. What's your name again? Uh, Keith Berner, B-E-R-N-E-R. -E mm -hmm. uh, I have a two-year-old who loves the sand pit at Walker Park, and so we're going there multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after, after we, we've had a grand total of two times that people have stopped wow. with the entire time, and one was our fine neighbors, Roger and Pam, who would mm. stop regardless of any uh, crosswalk. But it just it really isn't. Okay. Nobody's stopping at all, and we certainly have the number of times crossing every day to try it out. So okay. We've, we've got that on our list and we will sure mention it, but thank you so much for telling us. Okay, any other concerns? Let's see, can you, can you agree to that date? I think so, yeah. It's this one that's my brother's wedding. Okay. Um, all right, I think our next meeting... Um, oh, Alan, did you have something else? Oh, did you have another issue? Yeah. Just wondering, you asked for ideas, yes. if the TIF funding had been considered for the liner building. I don't know. It is in the TIF district. The TIF money is gathered from the property owners to be put back into the district to promote the district, mm -hmm. um, and you know, every four or five years we'll hear about a section of sidewalk or a bunch of trees or mm -hmm. some infrastructure, maybe paving. Um, that that seems like very viable. 
Okay, I will uh, bring so. that up. And also, um, we received the $100,000 NEA grant for the streetscape, and the so art. we're looking at if we can apply some of that to some public art or some infrastructure that will help as well. Mm -hmm. You got to the Walton Art Center, so we've already moved to Ward 2. And in Ward 2, there's an example of a problem we've had a lot of in in Ward 1 with flooding and uh, streamside uh, destruction. It violates the, in many cases, the letter and mm -hmm. many times more the spirit of the streamside protection ordinance and the same for the tree ordinance. And in this case, I believe you have a copy of a aerial photo there, mm -hmm. uh, don't you, that we could share. And this one? Yes, if I may. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. This is at five seventeen North Walnut. There's no sign. It's a vacant lot that uh has been vacant forever apparently. And it's the low point where the stream runs through that neighborhood. Now there's old piping and the piping is insufficient. However, it goes under people's houses, so you can't just replace it where it is now. A solution proposed in recent years, a few years back, was that the, uh, excuse me, the uh, pipe go down the street. It would go down two, actually two streets. It would be involved two streets, uh, part of Maple Street and <coughs> Walnut Avenue. And that means that uh, that narrow street, Walnut, would have a big dig going down the edge of it. Now, is Walnut in Ward 1? No, it's in Ward 2. Oh, okay. So but we probably better let... Well, I think we better talk about it now because you'll see it in front of the council a week, oh, okay. two weeks from now. That's okay. why I'm okay. bringing well, it up this early. Okay. And I hope the uh, Environmental Action Committee... Uh, yes, it is on the agenda for Monday. For Monday. Yes. So that's a place people from that neighborhood who want to talk about it can come. But it's parallel to the, the uh, things that have happened in our neighborhood and many neighborhoods across South Fayetteville, even though it's on the Illinois River watershed side. But the water goes through Gully Park. It's Skull Creek. It goes all the way out almost to the mall, in the mall area. Mm -hmm. And it drains massive amounts off of... Uh, Mount Sequoia, and the water runs down Gunter, down Maple, all the way from up on the mountain, mm -hmm. and it runs down uh, Johnson Street, and that's the lowest point where that stream comes through, just a, mm -hmm. a block, basically, um, to the north of this site. So it, it's pretty important that uh, this change that's to be asked of the council be denied because it would actually change the boundary of our streamside ordinance, which many of us were involved in working for several years ago and over many years before it came to fruition. And there have been several, uh, what's the word, uh, variances allowed by the Planning Commission, and some of them went to the council and were supported some of them not, but uh, they're minor compared to what this one would be in that particular location because it's probably a, a half acre uh, that would be um, changed so radically that no water would soak in there. It's now an existing natural rain garden. We talked about building in Miss Marsh, but you know how expensive that is and how mm -hmm. reluctant people are to do it as a retrofit. Okay. But when you've got this kind of, of lot already there and someone's asking for a change, actual change of the map uh, to allow it to be moved mm -hmm. further downstream, then it's, it's it, I think, incumbent on the council to support that uh, ordinance as it is written and denied. It's the Planning Commission heard it, 
Monday, week before we're meeting on Thursday. Uh, that'd be a week and a half now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, they, after they heard all the reasons that it was just for the benefit of one person who had recently bought the land on speculation and removed the timber and dredged the lot without any compliance from truly official sources. He'd worked with some of the staff members, but they were just bringing forth something to help him. But So are you suggesting that Ward 1 people might want to come to that meeting? I believe it affects all of us, okay. every part of our city and people outside the city in okay. the planning area. It is important that we continue to support that that uh, ordinance Absolutely. as it is. Absolutely. It's okay. not just for the stated reasons when we brought it forth, uh, the, the push to get it passed was based strictly on keeping the water clean right. to reduce the price of cleaning the water, not to have to raise more money and put it into our plants. And this water um, is going into storm drains eventually, but past this point, it should not be, no more of it should be piped. It should be natural, and do. that's the only way it can do the work it's, it's supposed to do. Yeah. And we don't want to set a precedent of overriding this ordinance every time it's inconvenient for a private developer, because it's really, the whole point of the Streamside ordinance, Protection Ordinance is to protect our citizens' watershed, our drinking water, as well as the integrity of our neighborhoods. And I think we really know that, especially down in Ward 1. I mean, I live in the floodplain, and I'm well aware of this the dangers and challenges we face. So it, it is about flooding. Mm -hmm. uh, your house yes. is high enough, I think, that it, it wouldn't it have to be a... Mm -hmm. That's right. And your house wouldn't mm -hmm. be if, for instance, uh, there's no stormwater uh, saved on the uh, land at the uh, new regional park. Mm -hmm. That area needs to be managed in a way that will protect the watershed, yeah. not just make a great ball field. It's got to be done right. And Thank you, Aubrey. They're not able to hear you oh, back there. Okay, I'm sorry. We don't... Yeah. Okay. We need okay. to get... We need okay. to have some amplification. Well, they, and we'll we try to work got on that. One out here that we'll work on that in the future. Maybe working. But Thank I apologize. You. But Thank you. We this, appreciate your interest. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Any other concerns? anyone wants to speak up. Okay, well, we have decided on uh, a meeting. Our next meeting will be April the 24th. That is the fourth Thursday night in April, the next quarter. And uh, so you can put it in your phones, but we'll have plenty of announcements again. And, uh, and any concerns you have before that date, just let us hear from you. We appreciate your being here. Yes, pardon? Yes, we're always going to meet here. We decided that that's, a, we love meeting at Yvonne Richardson Center, but thank goodness they have activities that we would interfere with. We don't want to do that. So we're just going to meet here. And then since this is a January meeting, um, I wanted to just kind of give you a summary of the things that I'm going to be focusing on uh, over the next year. And one of them is going to be getting our energy improvement district up and running to help our residents save money and reduce their energy usage. And you may not be aware of it, but we passed a really important piece of legislation last year called PACE, and that stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. And we're actually the 28th state to do that, but Fayetteville is the first state in Arkansas to actually form an energy improvement district um, in order to, for us to offer this service. And what we're going to be doing is uh, selling bonds to finance energy, imp energy efficiency improvements. Uh, and what you will be able to do is take out a loan. Well, first you'll want to have an energy audit to, do, to uh, find the most appropriate strategies to help you save energy and money. And then we will be issuing very low interest loans that you can pay back with the savings off of your utility bills from those improvements that you make. 
And the good part about these loans is they'll, they'll actually be tied to the property and not the owner. So if you are only going to live there for a few years and then sell it, the note goes with the property. So there's no risk to you as a property owner. And you have that pay-as-you-save uh, plan to help you finance that. So hopefully there will be very little to none as far as money out of pocket. Um, so we're going to be rolling that out soon. And then along with that, the City of Fayetteville is going to be offering a new benefit to its employees called the HEAL program, and that's the Home Energy Assistance Loan Program, and that's going to be very similar to PACE, but we'll be working with our employees, uh, 50 of them in this first pilot program, to make their homes more energy efficient, and they'll be able to pay back those improvements through a payroll deduction. Because, you know, one of the things we've done through the recession is we really balanced our budget on the backs of our employees. And we have not been able to give the raises that we would like to give, so this is one way to incentivize them to go ahead and stay with the city of Fayetteville because we don't want to lose those valuable employees. And it helps us to save energy in our community. Um, some other things I'm going to be working on, again, safeguarding the vitality of downtown by working to make sure that we get that liner building or something, hopefully that liner building, on our new parking deck. Because, um, you know, again, we don't want those dead spaces in our downtown. Uh, also, helping to put together a downtown town revitalization plan to promote our local businesses, include some affordable housing, and incre increase walkability and transit. And I have a special interest in promoting the south side, primarily south, south school. Um, and then we're all going to be working together to rewrite our solid waste chapters to reduce or divert at least 80% of our waste from the landfill. That's a goal we set recently at the council. Uh, it's, it's a high goal, but we're going to aim for it, and uh, hopefully we can achieve that. And then strengthening our development codes to support low-impact development best management practices to protect our watershed and to protect our low-lying properties. I'm also going to be looking for some funding and support for our Fayetteville Forward groups. They've been doing a lot of great work in our community. That's the uh, Creative Economy Group, the Green Economy Group, um, the Inclusion Group, and the Historic Heritage and Resources Group, as well as the uh, Local Foods Group. And those have been running on volunteer efforts, and we really need to get them to some support. They've been doing some great work. Like recently, uh, the Green Economy Group has developed what we're calling the Green MLS. And that is going to enable people who are looking to buy property to search for an energy efficient home. And if you're looking to sell uh, a, an energy efficient home, it'll help you get the money back from your investment by giving you a place to list all these features that you've invested in. So we're really proud of that work. Um, I'm also going to be you know, doing my best to support this urban agriculture ordinance, as well as uh, supporting an expansion of our community uh, garden program. We really need some of these community gardens down in Fayette Junction, and I think we probably need more of them in Jennings Edition in this neighborhood. So I'm going to do what I can to support those efforts. And also increasing opportunities for small businesses and incremental small sprawl repair by improving our mobile vending ordinance. This is something we've been working on in the Ordinance Review Committee and helping us get more food trucks. We love food trucks. And uh, other small businesses, like if you've been to the Yacht Club, it's a great place for young entrepreneurs or people who maybe don't have access to traditional loans to open a business to get a good start. And we've had four of those businesses that started in trailers are now bricks and mortar businesses. So it's a great uh, place for economic development and incubation of small businesses. And then I'll be supporting our transportation committee's efforts to design and implement an effective public transportation system. It's needed, it's about time, and so uh, they can count on my support to do that. And then continuing to advocate for sidewalk and infrastructure improvements in Ward 1, as well as looking for opportunities to preserve Kessler Mountain and to put that in the public trust. If you haven't been up there to see it, it's a really spectacular piece of property. It would be an amazing asset to future generations. Um, it's also conveniently next to our uh, regional park. So uh, hopefully there's a tie-in to that as well, so people who are uh, going to the park, uh, they can have other opportunities besides organized sports and just to get out and enjoy uh, our beautiful environment. And also I'm organizing a stream cleanup of the Cato Springs branch. In the spring I'm working with the Beaver Watershed Coalition and hoping to do a tree uh, planting as well down there. They, the city has just built a lovely new road, the trails coming through there. We have um, a lot of green businesses down at the Research and Technology Park. And so I really want to see that, that area 
grow and develop nicely. So if anyone's interested in getting out and cleaning up the stream and planting some trees, uh, be on the lookout for a date. I'm waiting on the beaver watershed to set that. But that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Any ideas or suggestions? Anything you'd like to say? Yes, Aubrey? Is, is it okay to mention a nonprofit meeting tonight? Absolutely. Sure, sure. Omni Center's having Kind of turn around so they can hear you. Say it sideways because okay. they can't hear you back the, there. Uh, Omni Center's having its annual gathering uh, on the at 5.30 p.m. Saturday, February the 1st, 2014 at Mount Sequoia in the dining hall. And that's a free event. Uh, they are happy to get donations, but it's a free event, and they're uh, certainly uh, going to have pop a wrap, something called heirloom, and something called don't stop please. I don't know what groups those are, but maybe they are uh, one something for everybody. Kind of like. So uh, that's coming up soon, and uh, I hope you'll be there on Saturday, the first of February. Now it's quiet. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we will be having some uh, candidates for political uh, uh, races coming up soon, and they're all invited to attend our Ward 1 meeting so that you will know who, uh, who your candidates are. Candy Clark has announced as our state representative to run in this area, and she will be attending our next Ward 1 meeting. She was having our kickoff meeting tonight and was very disappointed that she had planned it when we had our Ward 1 meeting, but she didn't know that. So anyway, any candidates will be invited to attend, any candidates. So if you have friends who are candidates, invite them to our Ward 1 meeting on April, what did I say, 24th, April 24th. And you may know Candy Clark is serving us as our JP, uh, the Justice of the Peace on the County Ordinance. Uh, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you so much for coming out on this cold night. We'll, yes. And we'll, don't forget to leave your pipe stripping tonight, your faucet stripping. Yes. Because it is supposed to get down to, I believe, one. Yeah. Yeah. So stay safe and bring your pets inside. Take care of your pets tonight. Thank you. Thank you.